Good morning, everybody. We are the Sea Cucumber Research Team. My name is Bryn Stilwell. I'm Ryan Davis. I'm Ginger Hatter. I'm Jack Tyrus. I'm Georgie Doig. I'm Eliza Bradford. And our advisors are Sam Gearhart and Sierra Eisen. We, for our research project, we did an abundance and population assessment of the sea cucumbers in South Eleuthera. So this is a sea cucumber. Surprise. It's not a vegetable. Um, they're actually little benthic organisms that move around on little podia feet with little tubular bodies, and they move up to about four meters per day, so they're really slowly moving organisms. Sea cucumbers are in, within the grouping echinoderms, which means they're part of the second largest grouping within the kingdom Animalia, next to chordates, or more commonly known as vertebrates. Like most echinoderms, they're able to live in a very diverse range of habitats with varying depths and temperatures. And they also exhibit five-point radial symmetry. However, Holothuridea, or the sea cucumber, exhibits their radial symmetry on the inside of their body. Sea cucumbers are also slightly different from most other echinoderms because while other echinoderms will reproduce asexually and sexually, sea cucumbers only reproduce sexually via broadcast spawning. So the ecological value. Sea cucumbers play a very vital ecological role in their ecosystems because they allow for energy and nutrients to cycle through the food chain. What this looks like is when an organism like seagrass, seaweed, or a fish dies, its body decomposes into the sand. And when the sea cucumber eats the sand, it absorbs all that nutrients and allows for it to cycle back into the food web once the sea cucumber itself is eaten. Um, they also benefit primary producers because when they digest the sand, they convert organic nitrogen into inorganic compounds that are very beneficial to primary producers like seagrass. They also aid in bioturbation, so when they bury themselves in the sand, that stirs up the sediment and allows for microorganisms that live in the sand to um, receive oxygen as well. And finally, they aid a little bit in ocean deacidification. Ocean acidification is when CO2 from the atmosphere dissolves into the ocean, but, um, and that raises the acidity. And sea cucumbers, they excrete a alkaline compound called ammonia, or NH3, and this acts as a little bit of a buffer between the rising acidity. So the history of sea cucumber fisheries. Sea cucumbers were primarily fished in the Indo-Pacific in countries such as China and Papua New Guinea. Recently, there was a case study performed in Papua New Guinea looking at the comparison between sea cucumber fisheries and their population. Uh, it was shown that as time went on, more and more sea cucumber fisheries started to appear, and thus the sea cucumber populations in the area greatly decreased. This caused many ecological problems, such as cyanobacterial mats starting to form on the ocean surface, effectively suffocating the ocean floor and uh, preventing photosynthesis from occurring. The reason there were so many sea cucumber fisheries that started to appear in Papua New Guinea was from pressure from other foreign vendors such as the Chinese. As you can see in this map right here, um, this map shows the threatened sea cucumber species across the world. And in the Indo-Pacific, there are lots of different sea cucumber species that are currently being threatened. But in areas such as the Caribbean, there are no sea cucumber species that are uh, in threat right now. So why do these countries want sea cucumbers? They're used um, in lots of medicine. Uh, sea cucumbers are actually thought to be a cure for cancer, and there's study going into that right now. And they're also um, believed to be a delicacy, so they're in lots of different food dishes. So uh, sea cucumbers in the Bahamas. In the recent past, the Chinese government has provided $35 billion into the Caribbean uh, marine fishery and agricultural industry in hopes to open a sea cucumber fishery in the Bahamas. So as of right now, there are no sea cucumber fisheries in the Bahamas, but in 2010, a sea cucumber fishery opened in the Bahamian island of Andrus in order to test if it would be commercially viable to open one up. Uh, after 11 months of the sea cucumber fishery in Andrus opening, all of the sea cucumbers in the area were effectively wiped out, which caused many ecological problems for that Bahamian island. Uh, as of right now, the Bahamian government is trying to decide whether or not to allow for the exportation of sea cucumbers to foreign vendors, and primarily the Chinese, and that's where we come in. The Island School, along with CEI, is going to be sending our findings, along with a recommendation, in order for the Bahamian government to make an informed decision on the topic. And our main goal, along with preserving the ecological values of the Bahamas, is to make sure that Bahamians are being benefited in the decision-making process. For example, when the fishery opened in Andrus, 
Bahamians were only getting around 50 cents per kilo of sea cucumbers sold, but in the Indo-Pacific, those same sea cucumbers were being sold for over $100 a kilo. So our aim as a sea cucumber team is to assess the population and abundance of sea cucumbers in South Eleuthera. We have participated in half of a stock assessment. A stock assessment is a collection of the biological value and approximate population data of a species. There are four components to a stock assessment. First, the stock status. The stock status is how many sea cucumbers there are. The ecosystem importance, which is the ecological value and the role the sea cucumber can play in the ecosystem. Third, the assessment information, which is our information collected, which we will be sharing to the Department of Marine Resources. It is especially important that we share this information with the local community as well, instead of just publishing it. Next week, we will be traveling to the Tarpon Bay Primary School and sharing what we have been doing and our research with the kids there. Lastly, the fishery importance. This is the economic value of the sea cucumbers. Our two objectives are to assess the abundance and population of sea cucumbers in South Eleuthera. Secondly, we will disseminate the information to the Department of Marine Resources. We have studied two different types of sea cucumbers, such as the donkey dung and the furry sea cucumber. The reason why we chose these two species is because they're the most commercially viable. We know this because of the recent study done in Andrus. These two were the most commercially exported. As you can see, this is a map of Eleuthera. We did most of our, of our manta towing in southern Eleuthera along three different types of habitats, seagrass, patch reef, and sandy bottom. The reason why we chose these three categories is so we can compare and standardize our data with the previous study done in Andrus. The first part of our stock assessment was assessing the abundance of sea cucumbers on different bottom types. To do this, to do this we used a method called manta towing. Manta towing is essentially dragging behind a boat on a wooden board as seen in these pictures. While we manta towed, we had two people in the water, each on different manta boards, and they looked two meters to the left and right, counting the number of sea cucumbers they saw. We used a standardized method in which we manta towed 100 meters, turned and went 15 meters, and then came back 100 meters. It is important that we use this method because it allows us to compare our data with other studies. Once we found the areas with the highest abundance, we began scuba surveys. In the scuba surveys, we set up four 30 by 4 belt transects for a total of 480 meters squared. We then split up into teams of two and counted the number of furry and donkey dunk sea cucumbers we saw. We also measured their length and width after stimulation, which causes them to contract. One way we will be disseminating our information is through QGIS. QGIS is a geographical information system used to create maps. It is used globally and is a standard software for creating maps, which allows us to compare our data with other research and eliminate some possibility of bias. Here's an example of a QGIS map that shows sea cucumber priority areas for conservation. As you can see, in the South Pacific, there is currently high priority for conservation. However, in the Caribbean, there is low to medium priority for conservation because there is no fishery. We'll be using QGIS to scale up our work done with abundance in population in South Eleuthera to the rest of Eleuthera. Okay, so these are our results. In figure six is a QGIS map showing abundance levels of sea cucumbers using Manitou. This map shows where we found the abundance of sea cucumbers. In the red areas, it is zero to 10 sea cucumbers. In the brown areas, it's 10 to 20. In the yellow, it's 10, 20 to 30 sea cucumbers. And in the green, it is 20 to, to 30 to 120 sea cucumbers. These areas were given to us by friendly fishermen who we interviewed to find out where the highest abundance of sea cucumbers were. In this first area on the Exuma side of the peninsula is where we found a very low abundance of sea cucumbers. We think that this is because the water was deeper and less protected and the habitat was sandy sediment, which is what we not normally find sea cucumbers on. In the second area is where we found a much higher abundance of sea cucumbers. This is because the water was shallower and more protected and it was patch reefs which the sea cucumbers more commonly found on. 
In figure 7 is a bar graph showing overall density of sea cucumbers in different habitat types. On the x-axis we have the habitat types and on the y-axis is the percentage of the sea cucumbers. In the 1,085 sea cucumbers we found in total, we found 90% of them on patch reefs, 9% on sandy sediment, and less than 1% on seagrass. In figure 8 is the bar graph assessing average abundance of donkey dung and furry sea cucumbers on the patch reefs. On the x-axis, we have the different sea cucumber species, and on the y-axis is the abundance of the species. In a 480 meter squared transact radius, we found 15 donkey dung sea cucumbers and 59 furry sea cucumbers. This was a surprise to us, as the research previously done in Andrus showed that the abundance of donkey dung sea cucumbers were more commonly found than the furry sea cucumbers. This scatter plot represents the size index length relationship of sea cucumbers. On the x-axis is size index in millimeters, and the y-axis is contracted length in millimeters. Because most of the points are close to the line of best fit, that means the two variables are highly correlated. The line of best fit is the line that represents most of the data. The r-squared value is also close to 1, which means the two variables are highly correlated. Based off the data we collected and scientific literature, we have found a need to gather more information surrounding the furry and donkey dung species in order to properly inform fishery management. Little biological data exists for modeling either species in the Bahamas. However, previous studies have shown that sea cucumbers are highly vulnerable to overfishing. Previous case studies, such as Andrus, have shown slow to no recovery over, over prolonged periods of time. Biological reasons for this are that sea cucumbers have delayed maturity of two to six years while the lifespan is only five to ten years, and reproductive success depends on the density of mature adults. This raises concern about the rapid decrease in density in Andros and the opening of a fishery in the Bahamas. Now what? What are we going to do with this information? One of our objectives is to disseminate results and recommendations to the Department of Marine Resources. There's a few options for this, including minimum legal size limit, gear limitations, permanent marine reserves, which could be only limiting a few patch reefs, place-based or user-based access rights to fish, licensing, monitoring, and reporting, and catch quotas, which would be putting a limit on how many sea cucumbers each fisherman could collect. Based off our preliminary results, we would recommend to the Department of Marine Resources that catch quotas and permanent marine reserves be put into place if a fishery were to open. Be this is because, um, from what we know and how fast a fishery would be depleted, Putting a limit on how many sea cucumbers each fisherman can collect and how many patch reefs are open to fish would hopefully keep the sea cucumber population healthy in the future. We would like to thank our research advisors, Sierra Eisen and Sam Gearhart, and other contributors, Sam Russell and Zachary Crum. Here's our work cited. Any questions? question was how are they harvested so sea cucumbers are usually just harvested by either free divers people going down and picking them up or scuba diving which is illegal but many people do it to add on that people can also collect them um, by wading knee deep into the water you also commonly find them at that shallow depth Um, it is primarily used as a, as a food source. It's um, commonly eaten there, but they wanted to open the fishery here because of the high abundance of sea cucumbers that we have. So this is like a great location for them because we have, they haven't tapped the potential yet of sea cucumbers. So where the sea cucumbers have been over harvested and the, the ocean floor becomes, uh, I forgot the term, but sick, how, how, how is that uh, remediated? So we didn't actually look into much on well, what happened after the ecological problems started to occur in um, Papua New Guinea, but um, to the best of my knowledge, it is, it is fixed by hand and with other um, research devices, that, but we didn't really look into it very far.
Well, there wasn't proper regulation on the Andrus sea cucumber fishery, so um, the pot, they were taking too many sea cucumbers too quickly, and the, as we said before, the, they take a long time to re replenish because of their um, late sexual maturity. So there has to be like really close regulation on when they can be harvested, and that wasn't that those regulations weren't um, put into place. Might the species be uh, able to be aquacultured? Because it seems like they uh, they stay in one place, they eat you know basically other 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 species waste. So might you be able to develop a, an aquaculture? Um, the question was, might these species be able to be aquaculture? Yeah, they. So the, the issue with aquaculture is it's very expensive. So um, there's not enough funds going in to fund that currently. Yes. Are you interested in presenting to the Union government here to not allow the Chinese to harvest here if you don't have the same problem that they did? So we're just sending our information and our data collected along with a recommendation that's non-biased. So no opinions when we send our information to the Department of Marine Resources. That's also why we'll be um, presenting at the Tarpon Bay Primary School, because we hope to um, inform the, the youth and then have that information be brought up to their parents that way. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> He was saying, uh, will they be shown on restaurant menus in the Bahamas soon? I, I don't think people here really want to eat them. <laughs> question was, how do sea cucumbers play into the research on cancer, curing cancer? Um, there is currently research being done with sea cucumbers to help arthritis. So the question was, are the species here the same that were in the, um, the South Pacific? And they, uh, the donkey dung and the furry sea cucumber here are different than the ones they were harvesting in the South Pacific. So we could, in theory, populate it there with the donkey dung and furry sea cucumber, but those are not exactly the ones that they wanted there. Um, not to my knowledge, but that's a great idea. <laughs> Well, because, or the question is, what do we know about sea cucumbers' role in ocean desertification? And the impact of taking And the impact of taking them out. So because sea cucumbers are such small organisms, it takes a large number of them to really make a difference in the ocean acidification. So is it, it's really in more populated areas of sea cucumbers that it would really make a difference to take all of them out or put more, a lot of them in. Um, the question was, is there a natural predator that feeds on these sea cucumbers? And um, the answer to that is sea stars, and sea turtles will sometimes eat them too. <laughs> 